Washington for the Black Women's Congressional Alliance. <laughs>
questions about what I can or cannot wear. If I have a hearing with my boss, I have kind of my hearing look and that my hair is slicked back, I have a red lip and I would have some really dramatic hearings. And then you're really concerned with kind of gossip. But it's my way of conveying my style, conveying that, you know, I'm not being sued, but, but I'm going to wear a red lip and I'm going to have some really cool earrings on. Um, because that, that's kind of that's kind of what I like. Um, and I think it's actually really important to have a sense of a style on the hill. Um, even though a lot of people might think that it's really superficial and important, but for good or bad, a lot of people remember me based on an item that I've worn or something that they've seen me in. And it sparked conversations with people that sometimes I never thought I would have a conversation with, meaning it could be a Republican staffer or sometimes I had members compliment me on something that I've worn either on the elevator or something like that. So when you think about style, don't think about it simply as a superficial thing, but it's also a conversation starter many, many times, especially on the hill where everybody can kind of be a copycat of one another. So any way that you can differentiate yourself is great. It's a great thing to do. So I think for me, um, I, I do use my style as a Just permission as a black woman to wear your hair the way you want to wear it. 
get up or even talk to people. Um, so I think that has unfortunately made me lazy over my staff and I'm um, just getting the cubicle and that's where we need for eight to nine hours to look like sometimes just that, right? Which is terrible, but it's kind of what I call that way. I feel like the house is more social, it's a little more relaxed, you know? It's the people's house. So you're going to have a lot of people and they're going to be really interested in putting the senators in the other chamber, as they like to call themselves, right? So I think none of them formal, uh, you know, on the Senate side, you have to have jacket if you're on the floor. If you're a woman, if you're wearing something that's legal to you, so you keep spare jackets that are kind of sometimes out to the kind of floor and you go into traffic because you're traffic and you're going to go on the floor today. Thank you. 
tips, you know, on how, you know, to look fabulous and stylish on budget. Yeah, I can speak to that at first. I mean, obviously, yeah, I'm the runway, but for us, I mean, that's this whole conversation is where runway came from. Was this idea that like I see such a difference between fashion and style. Fashion has is an industry that has really been for a certain audience for such a long time, whereas style, you can do style at any price point. Style is what you make and how you bring your, your sense of self to life through clothes. And I think for, for me personally, like I, I never felt included in fashion, I never felt represented in fashion. Um, I didn't have a lot of clothes that fit me in fashion, and there are community designers that are moving into, you know, like more plus size markets, and that is great that they're being exclusive, inclusive in that way, but it's still crazy inclusive for a ton of women. So for me, like style is less about what you're spending, but how you show up and how you get dressed for work every day. So things like how to build a wardrobe on a budget, I love to it. And you know, she's worth it, so. automatically 
were talking about training items, and you know, it's like summer, just some cheap summer dresses, that's not something I'll put too much money in. But certainly, like my wardrobe for work, I would say maybe Amazon, and for me as a plus size girl, I love Eloquy. It washes very well. I've had this in the skirt, again, I get lots of compliments on it, I've had it for like four years. And so it washes well, it holds up well, it's been through a couple, you know, pounds, down, up, all kinds of things going on. But it, it's, it's sustainable fashion, and so I think that that's something that we can all kind of take advantage of. And some of my favorite things that I have in my wardrobe that I have are clean vintage. Um, so I'm not going to a thrift store, I love thrift shopping because um, it's just Um, or, you know, I think there was a seat like a couple of seasons ago, leather skirts were really huge. And stores were selling leather skirts for like $30, 40 $50. And I'm like, this isn't even real leather. And I can just hop over to the thrift store, find a leather skirt for about 10 bucks, um, and I can get the look that I wanted. So, like you said, I don't think if you really want to be able to flash your budget, you need to be willing to go to a lot of places. And I think that's what a really like, established woman has to be able to do is to be able to find fashion wherever it is. Yeah. I, was, I was actually thinking about like how much I love the Goodwill mm -hmm. um, because I'm so different. Like when you think about building a wardrobe, you think, oh, okay, I need to find a few key pieces, which I'm not disciplined enough to do. I'm on the internet all the time looking at stuff. I'm on Instagram liking y'all's pictures, <laughs> wanting the next look, and so it doesn't quite work out for me to do the, the core thing and wait till it goes on sale. I like a lot of clothes all the time. Um, <laughs> okay, so we got some uh, vendors out there too. So I like the Goodwill. There's a particular Goodwill. I'm from Atlanta. When I go home, I get like 20 dresses that are all $7 each, and that makes like my seasonal uh, shop. And then also I just shop anywhere. Um, my friends are like, yes, you shop anywhere. So like if I'm in a city, I might pick up something that's like 10 bucks. Um, if I see a dress on Amazon that's like $10, um, then I might pick that up too. So I think it's like finding those little places where you can find um, fashion. It's not for everybody, but for the girl that has to have like a couple new dresses a month. Um, because <laughs> <laughs> the people who know me are like a couple, but for, for people who like a lot of clothes all, all the time, you've got to find a way to make it work, and there's some solutions to doing that. And as well as that, I would say we do a ton of research, and I think the one thing to really make your, you know, your style of your wardrobe work on your budget is be like brutally honest with yourself about how much you spend a year. The average American woman spends thirty to hundred dollars a year on clothing and clothing related services, so like dry cleaning. Um, and that's the average. So there's women that pay way more, and there's women that pay less. But the minimum is about one thousand to twelve hundred. Um, so be like really brutal with your finances. I did a full two-year audit of my own, and I was shocked at what I spent because you know the, the industry, the world teaches you like buy, 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 um, and it works. We make condition that we we need to look good. We all need to a great outfit, which is really fun, and it's not just a vanity thing again, I think it's because we have to show up, and especially as a woman of color, we have to like try even harder to show up to be deemed just as um, professional and respected. So it's be brutal with your budget and look and see where you can play with, where you can cut, and then again, look at tools and services that might actually be a better um, reality for you. Thank you so much for that. I would love. Um, delve into that a bit more because as women of color, you're right, like you do, there are so many things that we have to be more conscious of. You know, our bodies, whether we have curves, whether we can wear the sheet dress, we put on space underneath the sheet dress. Not because you're, you know, you're ashamed of your curves, but because you're worried that, you know, you may be hypersexualized, you know, that particular day. Or you have to push back, you know, against, you know, stereotypes, you know, all the time, you know, in, in the work environment and people's perceptions of you. Um, so how, and as women of color, like what is your advice for, you know, selecting, you know, those wardrobe pieces that we're worried that may draw too much attention to ourselves? And how do we balance and manage the feeling of having to tone it down and to suppress, you know, our, our authenticity, um, you know, in these very constricted, conservative, white, male spaces? 
I was kicking off, and I'm sure everybody's going to jump in because we we all have opinions on this. I, for years, would try to like, because um, if I stand up, you'll know what I'm talking about, but I would try to wear a little skirt, a little sweater, and tie it at my waist to cover my lower half of my body. And um, a guy said to me one time, he's like, you know you're not hiding that. <laughs> <laughs> it freed me because I'm not. <laughs> There's nothing I can hide. Um, and so, what I thought for myself is to set some ground rules. So, if it's um, tight, don't make it short. If it, you know, if it's if you're gonna take a little risk with color, maybe it's more of a conservative cut dress. If, if the top is low, like if it was low like this, I wouldn't wear this into the office like that. I may throw a blazer on it and then we meet up for happy hour and then I can take um, the blazer off. And this, I mean, as a woman of color, I, I've started to realize that women of all races have curves. So I took your, curve, your question as a curvy girl question, like how do you embrace that? And it's, you just say, well, world, here I am. You know, and, and deal with that. I think for me, um, I'm a size 18. And so I'm not going to hide. You can't hide it. Like, you see me? And, and so what am I supposed to, you know, do in terms of making someone feel, I guess, uncomfortable about who I am? I, I try to find things that complement my shape, <coughs> that complement my size, that complement my height, that looks good on my body. And so I think you know when something may be a little bit. If you have to think about it, you're like, hmm. That's enough. So you kind of have your own parameters about what's acceptable and what's not. And I don't dress for anyone else or what they may think. Um, at this age, I'm 33, I can't afford to wake up every day and be concerned about what someone else thinks of me. Or let that be a reason why I'm like, oh, maybe I won't wear this sweater dress that I know looks good. But, you know, someone else may have a problem with it. And so I think you just have to get comfortable with yourself and comfortable with who you are. And so let that be the person that people and when they meet that person, they'll know she's official, she's about her business, she'll be fine. And I really think that's something that comes with time because 20 year old Bernina would not have been comfortable um, with the things that I necessarily wear to the work that 34 year old Bernina is. And I think that just comes with really knowing what you bring to the table on multiple levels. It's like my regular should not distract you because I'm saying something important. Or my earrings should not distract you because this idea is really great and we need to move it forward. And I think that's just something that comes with time, it comes with experience. I very rarely think about what other people think of an outfit, like you said. I mean, there are some things that I've worn, and then I think you should do one thing that I would advise to do a test when we were clothing. Because you may think this is okay, and then you sit down and you're like, that actually should be a <laughs> Again, fashion has always kind of been a tool for me, so it was like a 
safety tool, which I think is kind of sad. So I did learn to dress myself conservatively in a situation where I knew it was going to be a distraction. Um, and even though that's not my problem to solve, it, it was helpful to make sure in certain situations that you get my mind and you get my point of view as opposed to getting distracted by these other elements, which is, again, not really for me to solve. So it's kind of that duality of dress for you first, um, but also if, if I can do something to make me the best version of me and them to see that, I would take that. So I did like selfish um, was fabulous panel, um, and then I want to be conscious at the time. Are there any questions in the audience that I was trying to do with this panel after it was too far? Um, <laughs> so how do you, like, what are some essentials that you need to build with the wardrobe? And should you start with the neutral palette? And how do you decide on the, the color, the pieces of color to bring in? I would say the lookbook. So it sounds very complicated, but it's really not. I mean, and it's as simple as making a Pinterest board there. And it's, I think this works for the fashion introvert as well. If you know what you like, if you see what you like, then it, okay, I know this is my board for skirts, so I'm gonna make up a skirt board. So when I do go shopping, I can reference this book and I know exactly what I'm looking for. I know what I want it to look like and I can pick this item up off of the rack. And so that brings some of the, that takes some of the anxiety out of shopping and, having it be overwhelming. And in terms, I think, of making, um, I think you said just like a, a, your basics, it depends on what you like. If you are a dress girl, find dresses that maybe are outside of your comfort zone, and okay, well, I might try an A-line, or I might try a cheap, or I, I might try something that's fitted. Um, I think that that is something just to know, like, what you like. Um, if you're like, I don't wear skirts, I don't wear dresses, okay, well, maybe an ankle pant instead of a boot cut. Um, so try different cuts, try different lengths. I think that that's one way to kind of build more, build up your personal style portfolio. I have a really good thing when you're getting staples because I have been doing that for years. And then when I needed a staple, I didn't have a staple. I had green pants, pink pants, yellow pants, blue pants. <laughs> I didn't have black pants, and it was just. It was just <laughs> someone has no clue about fashion what are state you, you keep talking you keep mentioning staple items in your closet could you please give an example of what are staple items that every woman should have in their closet in terms of playing around with it and swapping pieces out and just knowing what works for you tell her about the little runway styles mm. okay. <laughs> <laughs> Me, this is my experience, staples are spans. Sorry, it's true. I think that's really important to me and really good one of 
wearing bras, which we don't sell, thank you. Um, <laughs> so that is like truly like the base of every time I get dressed. For me, my number one staple is a wrap dress because it can extend to my different sizes, different views, you can put a cami on it. Um, so I think in my wardrobe, space, bras, uh, one pencil skirt, again, a couple pairs of jeans, a black pant, I think things like an ankle pant that can flex to a really work environment, but you put a heel on it, a tank top, you can go out. Um, I have a denim jacket that I've had since I was 12 years old, and I think that's not just because it's actually straight through. Um, that's not because I just love it, it's because it literally fits with everything, and you can make that, you can put that over a ball gown, and I have done that, or it's No, it fit for a couple years. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, looking at pieces like that, and I do find uh, just like plain shirts is a staple within my wardrobe. There's a lot of great uh, companies out there like Everlane that make really high quality ones, so you don't go through really bad fast fashion ones, and they do tend to fit. Um, and then if anyone has heard of Emma before, I think they're an amazing company for wardrobe staples, especially for workwear. Um, and they do a really nice job from a stylistic standpoint. And then what you were talking about, um, there's a, you can find nowadays with content, everyone's a content creator, you can find so much information online. Like literally Google like plus size, which that was my Google, like plus size wardrobe basics, and there were like a million women, so probably some of you guys up here, that have great advice. And I honestly I did that, I pinned, um, and then I wrote a book that told me these 15 pieces. I'll make a plug for the trench coat. Yes. <laughs> because it's so versatile. Um, and then a nude pump, um, because it can go with any and everything. If you find a pump that is something you can wear all day, and it's your skin tone, that can work with a work outfit. It can work when you're going to the bar and you just got a cute tank top on. Um, and then lastly, I, we keep saying the red lip, and I think the red lip, because it is, in fact, a staple. So, um, you find a red lip that works for you, booby boo, I feel like works for everybody. So like this outfit you have on now, throw a little swipe of booby boo, and then it takes it to another level. Mm -hmm. I want to wear a shirt. I want to wear a shirt that doesn't use it. It's like a good, solid gold shirt. You might have to get it, you know, for a few years, but I think that is a good deal. Yeah. That is a really good workstable and a good casual look. Yeah. Yes. You can play around with it. <laughs> I try to wear interesting flats that are either, if I'm going to be in flats, they're going to be a pop of color. Um, I have a, a couple pairs of flats that have spice on them, and that's always a conversation starter because then that's how people like to get their ass in the shoes. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think, um, so I think flats are a must in a way, let's just be realistic, and sometimes I look really huge and just to get to and fro. Um, but if you, if you have to be in the flats all the time, just make sure that it's a cool shoe off. Just as the older I get, the more I realize I really can't be in a flat heel with no platform anymore. I'm not going to. I don't want to be too low um, But um, Sarah Flint makes a really great flat that comes in um, a really beautiful like, luggage color that looks good on, on brown skin tones. That's a really good flat. Um, I've seen really, I think, a pearl pond. I've seen that most like, moisture wrap makes a really good flat. Um, and really just like comfortable and stylish shoes that I wear. I agree with that. I wear flats often. Um, they're comfortable, and so I think also your shoes is where you should invest your money if you're going to invest in anything in your wardrobe. Um, and so Cole Haan actually makes heels that I think the insoles are similar to Nike. And so if you shop around, okay, well, I know these feel good on my feet. I feel like I can get from point A to point B in these particular heels. If you feel some type of way about being in a flat, I would invest in a, a heel that works for you. It doesn't have to be four inches or five, whatever your you know your preference is, but find something that's comfortable that you feel confident in. And even if it's a flat, I would say invest in a really good flat. I, I don't know that I would wear toms often running around, but I think you can find a structured um, flat that looks good. Just try it on, make sure, okay, I know I'm gonna have to spend a few dollars on this, but make sure that it looks good, that it, it's a structured flat, and that you can wear it more than once, and it's not gonna, people aren't gonna look at you Oh, I was just gonna throw this in. Point of 
ponytail flats look a little bit more dressy than the round flat, especially for your short and little. And I, I, it's hard for me to go without heels because I don't feel like myself. But when I do um, wear a flat, it has like a little bit of a point to it. And I second what these ladies said and in investing in the flat. Also invest in your book bags. So they've got some like jazzy, very nice book bags that can be like better than the jam sport that I used to carry back in the day, um, running around in high school. But there's like some nice like leather that can give you a little bit of, mm, you can wear the same pieces with the same level, level of comfort, but just a little bit more flat. And then I West also just launched a pair of pointable glass in actual news. So they have skin tones that actually match darker skin tones. So a true nude, not just have one version of that race to it. So I recommend them. And they have little three inch heels too, which are nice. I always tell my husband because he like hates this because I'm always trying to. When I get dressed in the morning, I go through a few machinations. And so um, I feel like the dress chooses me. <laughs> so, I wake up in the morning, I look at my closet, and a few of them say something to me. And I don't know if y'all feel this way. Maybe this is just, maybe I'm only connected with people who have a true shopping addiction and really love clothes in a very deep way. Uh, but I look at like my clothes, and seriously, like I see my closet, I'm thinking, wow, that dress is going to that meeting. Um, but if you don't, if you're, if it's not, if clothing is not spiritual to you, I think <laughs> 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 And sometimes I might warn them, like, if it's going to be drastic, she's like, yeah, she does this. 
I say, I'm going to look different on Monday. <laughs> Don't say a word. And it helps. <laughs> and so that when I walk in the morning, I'm like, and they're like, hey, how are you? This and that. And so for me, it's just embracing. I'm never going to not want to, just like I can't find one skirt, I can't wear one hair. So I'm going to be me, but to make my environment more accessible for me, I did ask. Yeah. <laughs>